Hi, so this is a Guayque Cloud Pro. We did a video, 1652, where we compared this to the Glowforge. And quite a lot of people in the comments said, oh yeah, that's great, now use it. And of course I want to use it. Who wouldn't want to use a thing like this? Because despite it being good for all kinds of things, I mean like personalization, your own business, cutting models, etc, etc, etc. I'm a little bit more of an esoteric use for it. Some strange things I want to do with it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a few strange and unusual things with it that uh, fits more into some of the stuff we've been doing on homemaking solar cells and that sort of stuff. Now, this one is going to be using this. This is a pottery glaze. It's actually copper one oxide. It's the red copper oxide because copper oxide comes in two colours, red and black. You want the red one. The red one will reduce really easily to copper by firing a laser at it. Anybody with me? My plan or the thinking that I've got here is to take some of this, bang it on a bit of plastic, zip it through the Guayque Cloud Pro and see if we can actually draw solid copper lines. Because of course, if we can do that, I mean, wow, there's a whole world of possibilities opening up there for you. I mean, we're talking about printed circuit boards done without all of that horrendous waste and mess that you usually get using ferric chloride. We're talking about being able to print motor stators and motor rotors. We're talking about being able to print circuits, all that kind of thing. So it would open up an enormous range of possibilities for doing your own electronics, your own motor building, your own axial flux generators. Just mind blowing in the amount of things you could do with that if we can take some of this stuff and turn it into copper using this. As I say, this is just a pottery glaze. You can buy this from any potter suppliers. And the thing about pottery glazes, these days, they're actually really pure. Anyway, let's get on with it. So turning this stuff into an ink, <laughs> just a piece of cake, eh? all you do, stick it in a bottle, add some water, and then add some of this. It's matte medium you get from the local art store, about 20% by weight, and shake it. When you shake it, you actually get yourself an ink. And we're going to apply it onto this bit of plastic, which I pulled out from an old LCD TV. We, <laughs> I just love how you can resource these things from next to nothing and a bit of imagination. Pour it on, and we're going to do something called rod coating. Rod coating or male rod coating is actually pretty easy. You normally use a, a rod with little lumps in it. We're just going to use a piece of dowel. If you put a couple of strips of tape down there, you'll get an even thickness. And all you do is run the rod both ways. And we get an even coating that we can just dry. Okay, I've let my copper oxide dry and it's in the guayque and we're going to burn some lines in it see if we can get some copper. Now, it doesn't stick very well to the plastic, which is what you want because we want to dust that copper off and collect it so there's no waste. However, you do need to be a bit careful not to stick your fingers on it like I just did. But we're still going to use this sheet and see if we can turn that into actual copper. Okay, so I've been running a fair few trials at different speeds and different laser settings and different focal lengths of the lens because what we want to do is apply enough power to heat the copper oxide but not enough to burn through and you can see what I've been doing. So here we've got too much power, here we're burning it off completely and here we're just getting really close to a continuous copper film. Let's have a look at a couple of micrographs so we can get an idea of what's going on. See from those, we're getting nodules of copper forming, but the ink coating is clearly not a particularly good coating, and we've got cracks in it. And that's burning the plastic underneath, which is why we're getting the black marks on it. But as I play with that, we are getting nearer and nearer to a continuous copper film. Okay, so I've got it laid out in front, and we'll just quickly do the copper oxide. And as you can see, it's overload condition on the meter. And then if we go to our strip and pop it on there. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so 
Being a bit of a stubborn SOB, I repeated that five times. The laser settings on this quiet gay were uh, 250 millimeters per second for the laser speed, 3 millimeters for the focal offset, and 27% uh, uh, for the laser output strength. And I did exactly that process. Lazed it, wiped on some more ink, lazed it, and so on, and I ended up with this. And I've attached two separate wires to it, and the wires are connected to an LED. So if I touch that to that, here we go. We like the LED, which, when you think about it, is not the most impressive thing to do. However, what it does mean is that we've got a circuit that we printed onto this bit of plastic, and of course that opens up a whole world of possibility. I mean, this stuff uses hardly any waste. We could do really strange designs with it. We can look at generators, we can look at motors, and we can look at replacing PCBs. Now, it wasn't the best, eh? Because it did take me a little while. But the obvious things are that the quality of the ink wasn't great that I put on there. So what we really need is smaller particles. The smaller the particle, the less of that bubbling you're going to get and the less temperature you need in order to um, reduce and sinter the copper. So better made inks rather than just grabbing this stuff and shaking up some water and some glue, which is never going to get you the best results, eh? But if you do something with this better grade ink, smaller inks, better mixing, less uh, glue in there, for example, then you're going to get a really good job. But what we're doing is showing that it can be done. It can be done with pottery glaze, a Glyco Cloud Pro or any other laser printer you happen to have, and enough willingness to find out what those settings were. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do remember to like and subscribe because subscriptions really do help. And thank you very much for watching.